Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University. Hi, I'm Nick, and I love Washington's geology. I've been teaching it for 20 years now. Let's hit the highways, visit places you all know, and I can help you see Washington like you've never seen Washington before. Welcome to Central Rocks, Roadside Geology. Here we are. You know that scene, don't you? Vantage Washington, where Interstate 90 crosses the Columbia River. The spectacular bridge crossing the Columbia. Lots of folks have crossed that bridge. How many people know that this area was under a lot of Ice Age floods water, both moving water quickly and a standing lake, hundreds of feet of standing water right above this scene. How do we know that? Do we have any evidence for that? Today we're going to spend a lot of time looking for specific clues that this place was hammered by repeated floods during the Ice Age. After decades of careful research by field geologists, it's now clear that this part of the state was hit hard by dozens of floods between 17,000 and 15,000 years ago. As North America's ice sheet was slowly retreating to the north, enormous volumes of meltwater pooled along the ice front and periodically emptied as a raging torrent across eastern Washington. Glacial Lake Missoula in Montana and the source of many of the floods attained a depth of 2,000 vertical feet and 500 cubic miles of water. At least 40 major floods came from Montana. But there is mounting evidence that the melting ice sheet that covered northern Washington, in the Okanagan Valley, for example, was another source for water. Okay, we're looking for clues, right? Can you look right down there beside the interstate? Right to the left of it. You see those light colored rocks, light grays. That shouldn't be here. This is an area that has basalt bedrock, dark colored bedrock, but we have all those light colored rocks making that real subtle hill. That's a flood bar. Those are rocks dropped by the Ice Age floods. They would not be there without the Ice Age floods because they've traveled hundreds of miles to get dropped right here. And essentially that's a pile of glacial erratics. Beyond it, is our local bedrock. You can see the dark brown to black, but notice that the steep cliff is unusual. Without the Ice Age floods ripping that face off, you could have hiked from the top of that cliff gradually all the way down to the Columbia River, like in the Yakima River Canyon south of Ellensburg. But instead, the steep cliff and the flood deposits, the flood bar, great evidence for something unusual here, the Ice Age floods. Want to know where the Ice Age flood scoured our state? It's as simple as looking at a map of the coolies of eastern Washington. Each coolie simply was not there until the floods hit. That's millions of years of history until the geologically recent Pleistocene epoch when our water story occurs. The orientation of our coolies worked together to tell a story of devastating flood erosion. Flood water reaching up to 50 miles per hour, hauled off millions of tons of basalt bedrock. Where the floods missed, gentle rolling hills that today are used for wheat farming. Where the floods hit, deeply incised coolies. One of the most impressive coolies sits just a stone's throw from Interstate 90 between Vantage and Quincy. Every day, thousands of drivers whiz by the Silica Road exit, unaware that one of our most famous Ice Age flood features is waiting to be explored. Frenchman Springs Coulee, prior to the construction of Interstate 90 in the 1960s, was host to the Sunset Highway, the main thoroughfare between Seattle and Spokane. 
today, the Cooley is a forgotten chapter in the history of Washington State. This is hallowed ground. This point right here in central Washington, Frenchman Springs Cooley, is one of the most spectacular pieces of evidence we have for the Ice Age floods that came across central Washington. This place has been debated among geologists for much of the 20th century. And finally now we all have come to a consensus that the geometry of this coulee is such that it can only be explained by catastrophic flooding during the Ice Age floods of the Pleistocene. Let's look at the geometry here and the scale of the geometry. Perfectly vertical wall below me. Perfectly horizontal floor of the coulee. And vertical on the other side as well. In normal situations, under normal geologic circumstances, we have a V-shaped valley with a river cutting. But in this particular case, we don't have any of that V-shaped valley. We have a box-shaped valley, otherwise known as a coulee. Used regularly by geologists all over the Northwest, Frenchman Springs Coulee also attracts outdoor enthusiasts. Springtime in particular is a wonderful time to enjoy the coulee. The wildflower displays are often outstanding. Our model is of a retreating waterfall system. So the key to visualizing how this works is to imagine when the first floods came in, none of the coulee was here, it was solid rock. And there was a waterfall way down in the distance there at the Columbia River itself. Through time then, as repeated flooding came through here, the lip of the waterfall started to backtrack. In other words, through time we had a migrating or retreating waterfall system, and with each passing flood, the length of the coulee was enlarged. The net result is this tremendous gash called Frenchman Springs Coulee. Funding for this series is made possible in part by the Donna J. and Charles T. Cole Charitable Foundation and by the Department of Geological Sciences at Central Washington University.